the largest uh, televised uh, debate in history and possibly the largest televised uh, show in history. And to be honest with you, what I've been telling people here, and I've been interviewed on TBS 80 today, I'll be on Eyewitness News at 4, you know, just telling people that it's really, um, you know, it is basically the Super Bowl of politics. And it's more of a TV show than it is an actual political event. Because let's be honest, people here don't necessarily know what topics uh, we're talking about. They don't understand the substance. Um, well, some think that Donald Trump doesn't have a flag here. A lot of people think that Donald Trump is uh, not very substantial. I tend to disagree with that. I think he has very um, strong policy points uh, on economics. He's given an economic speech on immigration, national security. Um, it's been Hillary who's moved far left um, to run against Bernie Sanders in the primary and now obviously running in a general election. So it's be no. interesting to see what Look. side of both candidates we get tonight. Is it going to be um, you know, a Trump who is seasoned, who's someone who is getting used to the debate, someone who uh, you know has been on message since Kellyanne Conway took over as campaign manager. That's what Trump supporters want to see tonight. They don't want to see someone who is unhinged, calls Hillary Clinton crooked Hillary. You know, let no lie in ten moments, all right? They want uh, genuine, uh, you know, Trump who uh, who is a little bit more subdued, a little bit more controlled. Um, you know, Hillary wants to get his goat. She's been practicing very hard on trying to get Trump to become unhinged. Um, so it, it, we'll see what we get. Uh, but Trump has to be careful because you know you have a very uh, tall, powerful man on the stage next to a woman like Hillary Clinton. He could very well be accused of being a sexist, which, again, I, you know, I've said this before, it's like the old uh, playbook from the Democrats saying that conservatives are racist, homophobic, Texas, Islamophobic. Remember the basket of deplorables comment that Hillary Clinton made? Well, Trump supporters aren't too happy with that comment, and um, to compare, you know, Trump supporters to bigots, um, you're alienating millions of people in the United States. So that was obviously a big... Uh, uh, turning point where Hillary Clinton starts going down in the polls. You know, Trump's been on a big incline in the polls. He's actually, you know, since Kellyanne Conway took over, since he met with the president of Mexico, he's looked presidential. He's been, um, you know, he looks more, uh, more like someone who would be the leader of the free world. So I think for Trump, and since he met with the president of Mexico, he has been so on message, and his numbers are showing it. The latest ABC News Washington Post poll shows that he's in a virtual dead heat with Mrs. Clinton, um, and a lot has to do with the fact that he's on message, and he represents change, which, you know, in 2008, 2012, they had the debates here at Hofstra. And, you know, President uh, Barack Obama, then Senator Obama from Illinois, represented change. And that's what people wanted at that time. You know, George W. Bush was in office for eight years. It was in a post-9-11 world, and it was about change. It was about, um, you know, I don't think any Republican would get elected uh, in 2008. Obviously, uh, John McCain happened to be in the middle of that. We'll talk a little bit more about issues, but let me show you around here. So this is Hofstra. If you look over here, CNN is set up over there. And Fox News Channel, a uh, place that I uh, know very well, uh, uh, is broadcasting from there. I know Sean Hannity broadcast here last night. They're doing a lot of the shows uh, tonight from there. You have uh, people taking pictures at this bus. You have Trump and Clinton on the CNN politics bus there. C-SPAN is here as well. Take a look at this. Uh, White House uh, bouncy, whatever they call it. Uh, people jumping up and down like a uh, little design of the White House. Um, People are very enthused here. It's a little bit of a lull right now as uh, people are eating, taking a break, but um, uh, people lining up soon uh, to go into the debate. Uh, about 200 students, from what I'm hearing, uh, got in uh, from the lottery, and uh, so they'll be um, they'll be in the debate hall, which is the David S. Mack Sports and Exhibition Complex. Um, check out abc7ny.com. You can also check out my website, neilacaruso.com. That's an E-I-L-A-C-A-R-O-U-S-S-O.com. Uh, for two stories they did, and one on millennials, what are they thinking about this? And what I gather is, as far as issues are concerned, they're really concerned about climate change, they're concerned about women's rights issues, um, a lot of liberal policies. You know, like college campus, what do you expect? Um, but, you know, overwhelming majority of Trump supporters, the electorate, are concerned about national security and the economy. The two major issues, um, in my opinion, this election. So um, you have that going on. 
uh, right now. You can check out that uh, that feature and see what the you know the enthusiasm is like for these two candidates with very high on favorables, uh, the least like candidates in modern presidential history, which uh, is fascinating. You know, people say Trump is a uh, is a performer. Well, we'll see if he performs tonight. Uh, you know, again, it's a TV show and it's about coming across well um, for him. Uh, so this is basically uh, the lot where, you know, plenty of security here. Oscar's really done a very nice job of organizing the debate. Um, there were the alternate. There's Wright University who cited security concerns and decided to uh, withdraw uh, over the summer, I believe in July. And so Oscar, as the alternate, um, did a very nice job putting this together in just a short amount of time. Um, you have a bunch of people uh, here. You got some Black Lives Matter protests, uh, protesters, and uh, on the other side of campus, you're having uh, some protests are being organized. Um, I talked to Nassau County Police earlier, and they uh, told me that they have it pretty under control. They are um, very organized. They have a security checkpoint, so anyone that goes into the uh, protest area, they call it a free zone um, space uh, or free speech zone. Um, and basically, they have this uh, this area uh, in a parking lot that's empty, uh, put over to the side. You have to enter a security checkpoint. You're not allowed to have firearms. You're not allowed to have um, you know many materials, bags. Um, uh, press are allowed in in a separate area. Um, you know, to be honest with you, I was thinking about that. That seems like a very smart policy because we see what's going on in Charlotte right now with the riots. They're not protests or riots. Um, and they're taking it to the streets and destroying cars, destroying private property, taking over the streets. And the problem lies in that you totally lose control over the public. Um, and here, you have a very controlled area. In Nassau County Police saying, hey, there's a security checkpoint. You can protest, you can exercise your First uh, Amendment right to free speech, but we have the ability to control the security um, and make sure it's under control. I think keeping the press away from the protest is smart. Because you know what? You have a protester who sees a camera, they want to take advantage of that and, uh, and make it into a big scene. Um, and we're seeing that on the national uh, you know, broadcast every day in Charlotte, and it's really, uh, you know, it's really it's sad to see uh, what's going on. And you know, Trump's been talking a lot about security. Uh, I know uh, Mayor Rudy Giuliani, former mayor of New York, um, is talking about uh, security and, and how to uh, keep these protests controlled. Um, I mean, listen, it all starts with thanking police officers and respecting them, right? I mean, you have a, you have a First Amendment right to free speech, no doubt, but um, it all starts with, uh, with respecting the police. And uh, thank you to all those police officers who were keeping us safe today. Um, they did a spectacular job uh, to keep us safe and checking IDs. I mean, I can't even get in. Um, not that I'm that popular, but I can't even get in without showing my ID, which is good. I, I told somebody, listen, check my ID 10 million times a day, that's fine, because... If it keeps us safe and prevents terrorism, I'm all for that. Um, so, again, you have all Fox News, CNN, MSNBC is over there doing broadcast. Um, I win his news tonight at 4. Um, I'll be with uh, Josh Heinegger at 4 o'clock. Um, you'll see um, Field producing the 8 o'clock uh, pre-debate countdown with Sade Barrowa and Bill Ritter. Uh, so see how they're doing here um, at Hofstra University. It's really an electric atmosphere. It's uh, it's so much fun to be a part of. And Scott, who's uh, behind the camera, you were you were here. I'm going to ask you to talk, even though you don't like to. You were here in 2012, right? Yep. What was the atmosphere like in 2012? Completely different than this one. This one's far more energetic. It's far more livelier, and uh, a lot more people came out for this. It's far more massive. Yeah, it's, it's huge. It's huge. All right? um, but seriously, uh, it's a Trump effect. Um, you know, uh, I think without Donald Trump in this race, people aren't even paying attention to politics. People aren't talking about immigration. They aren't talking about the border. Um, these are important topics. Um, what's interesting about the border, when I was a little kid, um, I remember having a conversation with my father about um, about drugs coming in across the Mexican border. And, um, you know, I, I was maybe seven years old, and someone who didn't know politics, just, you know, uh, young kids said, um, you know, why isn't there a wolf? Just a basic question. I had at seven years old, and we're still talking about that today. Interestingly, people don't realize um, that wolf was supported post 9-11 by both parties, the Democrats and the Republicans, and uh, it was passed into, into law. 
um, in 2006, but they didn't appropriate enough money for it. And President Barack Obama, when he took office in 2009, nixed the idea, and so that's why we had a lot of uh, open borders, and we didn't um, we didn't secure it all the way. Now, would that solve all our problems? No, but I think it's about law enforcement. Uh, it's about you know protecting the American people, and this is why Trump is doing so well because he resonates with the American people. There's a there's a sense that. Um, but our politicians are not working for us. There's a sense that the politicians are working for special interests, or are taking money. I mean, listen, Hillary Clinton's taking money for the foundation, um, and this is an accusation of pay for, uh, pay for play, but she's very well documented as taking money from Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Qatar, United Arab Emirates, right? All countries who, you know, let's say Saudi Arabia, for example, um, a Islamic nation who takes, uh, who basically, if you're a woman, you are told, uh, you know, how uh, how to dress, when to leave the house, um, you know, if you could drive, you have to obey by men. Um, that's not a society we live in, um, you know. And in addition to that, um, homosexuals are actually the death penalty um, in a place like Saudi Arabia and Kuwait. Um, imprisonment uh, is the least of the uh, penalty. So when you, when Trump talks, I think a lot of people feel the nationalism that, you know, we have to be, let's take our country back, and people have to, when they come into America, we're a land of immigrants, no doubt, but we got to find a way to get them here legally, and we have to also, um, they have to assimilate to our culture. We have our own American culture that's very inclusive here. Um, so uh, that's, basically, that's where Trump is coming from, and I think Hillary plays in a lot of um, uh, you know, her policies are with the mainstream, mainstream liberalism that um, many people just feel like, oh, well, you know, let anyone in, um, and there's no law enforcement. Um, and I talked to you, uh, David Discard Kalik uh, from the Fiscal Policy Institute about that. Check that out on my website, neilacruso.com, uh, for that feature. And he, you know, he said, listen, immigration is great for the economy, um, but... Uh, it's illegal immigration that hurts us in more ways because you have, uh, you know, they are undercutting wages and people who are leaving college, they should be, they should be more PO'd about immigration, but illegal immigration than anyone because they're coming into the labor force and there are jobs available, especially here in Long Island. Millennials are fleeing Long Island. Does that show it? They are leaving New York and going to places uh, in the middle of the country that are uh, cheaper, uh, obviously lower cost of living, but the wages are lower. Uh, but there, however, there are higher level, more skilled jobs in middle America than there are in big cities, uh, in New York especially. Uh, and so people coming into the labor force, unless they're really special, they're, um, you know, they should be more uh, angered about illegal immigration because it's undercutting their wages. It's they're taking some of their jobs. So, uh, hey, Lindsay Crescenti over there. One of officers. So you want to hey, when you come on? You don't want to come on. She doesn't want to come on. She's shy. Um, working. She's uh, volunteering in the debate. So there are plenty of volunteers here that um, have been here since like 2 a.m. 3 a.m. You take a look around. I mean, you know, it's crazy because they're so dedicated to. Um, They've, uh, they've come out here with so much enthusiasm and excitement. I'll tell you, class tomorrow, I'm going to be tired. Uh, and I think a lot of people here will be tired uh, tomorrow. But um, the point is, tonight is big for this country. It's the first presidential debate. Um, it's a pivotal point in our country where we need to be talking about such issues like national security. We need to be talking about the economy. How about health care? talking to Josh Eidegger of ABC about it. I mean, listen... But, uh, you know, deductibles are through the roof. Um, if you see a specialist uh, doctor, um, you, uh, were, uh, you were on notice that your medicine um, had to be, uh, you actually had to try lower level medicine, um, even if you were on that medicine for years. Uh, doctors are, uh, you have to get referrals to specialists. Um, and deductibles through the roof right now. And Obamacare really has not uh, helped the middle class at all. I mean, maybe it's helped. You know, very low. Uh, you know, uh, the lower uh, class of uh, you know lower income class, but middle uh, middle America has been hurt by Obamacare. Um, so, you know, Donald Trump says, "Well, why don't we feed into it like Social Security, do health care savings accounts, where it's your own money, and then you take from it as you need it." 
Okay, it makes sense. It's like an IRA almost. Um, yeah. Whereas Hillary Clinton, I guess, wants to do more of the same. But, you know, it's funny because I find Hillary Clinton has moved all over the spectrum and there's no real uh, policy um, position um, because she changes so often. Now, Trump's changed his stance on a lot of things. I mean, you take abortion, for instance. Uh, I think back in uh, when he was younger, uh, he was pro choice. He says he's pro life now because he's running as a Republican, but. You know, that's, uh, I don't think that's a big issue, though. I don't think um, uh, social issues are such a big issue. I think we need to move past it. Um, I mean, I have friends who are gay. I think we need to say, listen, um, gay marriage, abortion, uh, we need to put that aside. Let's focus on securing our nation and uh, putting the interests of the American people first. Um, I have our support here. There are a number of Trump supporters. You can tell because they're wearing red Make America Great Again hats. Um, Hillary Clinton, there are some. I notice a lot of them are actually undecided, or they hate both of them. I mean, they're all variables. They're about 60% for both uh, in all the recent polls. And uh, what you're seeing is there just isn't, uh, you know, they're wearing generic t-shirts. I mean, you can take a look around at some of the people that are uh, walking around the lot here outside by the national media. And, you know, they're just generically, um, well, there's one Trump supporter over there in a the blue shirt trying to make America great again cap. But you're not seeing much of that. I think you're seeing a lot of um, a lot of people who are undecided, uh, and they hit both of them. Uh, a lot of Bernie Sanders supporters uh, still angered about um, about uh, Hillary about Bernie Sanders dropping out of the race, and they're not supporting um, Donald Trump. Uh, there was a, pro, a little press conference, I guess, yesterday from Jill Stein, the Green Party candidate. Um, People I talk to say uh, she's she says that she's going to be here today. Uh, she got arrested four years ago here in Austria. Um, so we usually see if she shows up. Uh, there's a small amount of students who are supporting Gary Johnson um, and trying to get him on the debate stage, but it's not Hofstra's fault. It's uh, commission presidential debates at the bar of 15 percent. So listen, the deal is we're here at Hofstra University in Hempstead, New York. Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump. Um, it's going to be pretty epic. It's going to take place at nine o'clock. Uh, it is over there. You can't see it from here, but it's the David F. Fox Sports Exhibition Complex where the Hofstra Pride basketball team uh, plays. And that will be uh, 9 o'clock tonight. You can catch on every single network. Um, again, I'll be uh, producing ABC's coverage tonight. Uh, that's Channel 7, uh, WABC TV in New York City. Um, and uh, I'll be on Eyewitness News at 4. Check out my work on ABCNY.com. Thank you to ABC. Um, and good job, Scott, on the camera. Thanks for. Uh, for watching. Uh, we're live at Hofstra right now. Gilly Caruso, I'll, uh, I'll see you soon. Let's, uh, again, it's your, your choice and your vote. Um, it's important. So uh, get out to vote on November 8th. We'll talk to you soon.